What's up everybody, Superworks fan here for another Mustang GT weekly update back in the GT and uh, it just feels great. I'm sorry I haven't posted any other actual driving videos uh, of the car since the pickup video uh, on Friday. Um, just been busy driving it uh, and been busy with other things in life that have uh, kind of prevented me from being able to uh, do a lot of videos but I do have a whole list of videos planned that hopefully I'll have time to do here over this weekend and into next week uh, so that uh, I'll be able to uh, post up a few other things. I want to talk about my insurance costs and how those have changed from the EcoBoost to the GT and uh, stuff like that. And I still probably want to do another video on why I didn't go with a Camaro because there still are a lot of people that seem to have that question. Um, and just some other you know things like that. I want to just mention you know things I like about the car and stuff like that here. Um, it will probably be a little while until the car is broken in because I am almost at 600 miles here. A thousand is what you need, of course, to break it in. Um, and uh, I'm going to start getting press cars again here starting with uh, this upcoming week and um, so some of them I'm not going to be driving a whole lot because they're not very exciting cars and they will just be those bonus reviews that I mentioned in the weekly updates in the past uh, that will be you know on the weekends or something be a little bit of a simpler um, shorter kind of review but uh, I'll still do a review on all of those normal cars because I do appreciate you know there was a good amount of you that um, gave me feedback and said you know don't completely get rid of the standard um, you know board boring quote-unquote car reviews as well because you know there's a lot of you that are interested in normal base models of cars and not just enthusiast stuff and I do want to cater to everyone and so you know I'm gonna keep the enthusiast cars as the primary focus still but I think I'm still gonna try and do uh, every once in a while you know a bonus review on the weekends of some ordinary car that way it doesn't take away from what you're used to it's just additional bonus footage really and uh, hopefully you know those of you that like that stuff will enjoy it those that don't like it it won't bother you too much because it does and, uh, impede on the fun stuff so um, yeah but the car I'll be getting next week will be one of the fun cars that I will be doing a full review on and that is the Lexus GSF that uh, Lexus will kindly be sending me on Monday and should be very exciting and so because of that you know especially when I'm getting these exciting ones in the must this Mustang you know won't be uh, driven too much here um, I still will take it out because I do still love this car and uh, you know the GSF is going to be sweet uh, no doubt but uh, you know it's still uh, gonna love driving this. Other things to follow up on uh, some people you know were asking if there have been any squeaks or rattles that have developed yet uh, while I've been driving it. There hasn't been anything honestly it feels and drives exactly the way it did before I got into the accident and um, it, it just feels tight as a drum everything's great no new rattles or anything like that um, just the typical must Staying rattles that the EcoBoost had and everything else um, that you know like that rear window that likes the rattle stuff like that but like I said that happened with the EcoBoost uh, from basically day one and uh, was apparent in this car as well um, but otherwise yeah everything's really good I did have to go back one time and have them touch up a tiny little thing on the trunk lid um, and that was just a dumb little thing that I missed and they missed and uh, it took all of 30 seconds and that was it um, but otherwise yeah no complaints everything still uh, looks really great um, and so uh, just enjoying the car again but yeah that's it as far as all the updates on the Mustang the only other thing I want to just say real quickly is thank you guys so much for your amazing support of uh, both the Shelby GT350 review uh, that's been uh, doing very well and many of you enjoyed it as I expected most of you would with you know one of my craziest reactions yet but also the Focus RS review which blew past 250,000 views already in the first week uh, really awesome to see that so thank you very much for all that so anyway that's it for all the updates on the Mustang and everything uh, so I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is uh, Ford was out, Ford Performance, I should say, was out testing uh, the new Shelby something, or it, there's lots of rumors and debate as far as what this actually is, but the consensus is currently that it's probably the new Shelby GT500. Uh, so as you can see from the spy shots here, the front is totally camouflaged up there and looks uh, a little bit more aggressive than a standard, uh, you know, Shelby GT350 would, which is what this clearly is. This is a GT350. 350 um, you know basis that they have modified to work with whatever it is that's going on under the hood of this car and most likely like we said GT500 
Rumor is, the popular rumor, I guess I should say, is that it is some kind of twin turbo V8 engine, um, although there's been also rumors that it could be a supercharged V8 still, and uh, even some other rumors saying this is just a Mach 1, but it looks way too aggressive to be just a Mach 1, uh, like the Mach 1 that we saw a couple of months back. Um, and uh, so not sure what it is, but if you do look very closely at the camouflage there from the side, you can see that it still has the same gills and the same headlights there as the current current, you know, 2015 to 2017 Mustangs. So I don't think we're looking at a refreshed body style here or anything like that. So don't be upset that there isn't any new changes for the back end. Um, there's been rumors that the GT500 could actually start off as a 2017 and a half model um, and just barely make it in time there for the 50th anniversary of that. And then it would also get the refresh uh, that is still rumored to come in 2018. So that could be why you know this doesn't have any changes. But again, this is just strictly a mule. This is sim you know simply a chassis to test this engine in. You know a car that is somewhat similar to what a GT500 will be end up uh, building. And it also has a little sticker on it uh, that has TT. And some people thought that meant twin turbo, but actually that means uh, trial tooling. Um, and so it's just a trial run um, for you know there's different phases as far as pre-production goes. There's you know the TT phase, and then there's the pre-production phase, and then the production phase. So this is still um, you know pretty early on um, but again those stickers could be put on there to throw people off who know better um, it could just be uh, you know who knows what this is but what we do know is the photographer said that uh, these people were trying to get away they did not want to be photographed this isn't just some you know hoax or any kind of thing like that this is a legit prototype that's out running around for some kind of hotter version of the Mustang and um, so for that reason it's exciting news regardless of what it is exactly or when it will come uh, so great to see that uh, another thing that, uh, again, still the rumors continue to persist is uh, about the Corvette and the idea of a ZR1 Corvette and the idea of a mid-engine Corvette. Um, you know, we had those spy shots of the mid-engine Corvette that, um, you know, surfaced a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, there hasn't been any new pictures of that. But there is new information, or I guess I should say rumors about um, this new uh, Corvette that's mid-engined. And... Basically, what they're, this report is saying uh, by Autoblog here is that uh, the C8 is codenamed Emperor uh, for this mid-engine one. Um, that it's going to be arriving in 2019. It's going to be shown off in 2018 sometime. Uh, it's going to be a 2019 uh, car. And um, so... As far as the timeline, though, they said that the C7 would continue on until 2021, so they would be built alongside each other. Um, the thinking is that um, the C8 could actually debut with the top range ZR1 C8 version as the um, you know first uh, appearance, and then given you know get, let the C7 run out for the last couple of years there, and then in 2021, that is whenever the C8 will then you know get the standard you know normal V8 engine or whatever they end up doing for the next generation core and then that's when you get all the other uh, cheaper variants and but it would start off with this super high performance version which is obviously backwards from the way a you know product cycle normally works with you know starting off with the standard Corvettes and then going up to the Z06 and ZR1 and all that kind of stuff so again all kind of foggy one thing we did see uh, this past week though are some new um, a, a prototype Corvette which this one has the engine in the front but it was spied running around with heavy camouflage on the front there and there are mounting points in the rear there for what would appear to be a larger spoiler that isn't attached but um so and all, this one also does have blue brake calipers which is a, usually a signature sign of the zr1s in the past so um again this is where the rumors are conflicting each other so a lot of people think this is a zr1 prototype for the c7 but then, you know, why make a ZR1 version of the C8 around the same time? So, again, all kind of up in the air here, all just uh, rumors that conflict each other. But what we see here this past week was a much more aggressive Corvette for sure. And uh, so, not sure what it means or, you know, what it's out doing. I know that they said they're going to be revising the Z06 a little bit um, to have better cooling and stuff like that. So, maybe this is what that is. But then, I don't know why it would need a more aggressive spoiler on the back or, you know, the different brake calipers and things like that. But that could be all this is too. It's just a refreshed version of the Z06 uh, to fix those, you know, issues that they've had in the past. Um, 
So who knows? Other Chevy news, though, that is actually uh, supposedly confirmed, um, and that is that the new ZL1 Camaro, um, there was an order guide that was leaked, um, and this order guide suggests it's going to have 650 horsepower. Now, we originally heard 640, um, at least, you know, was the official remark, um, but it looks like it's going to be 650 horsepower and an even 650 pound-feet of torque as well, which would make for a very impressive uh, performer for sure, and more is better, so... 10 more horsepower than we were expecting is a welcome thing. So great to see that. Uh, an interesting thing that uh, Nissan debuted this week in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, is this new uh, blade glider concept, which uh, you know we saw a couple of years ago, but it was strictly a concept. It was not anything that was uh, you know set in stone. Um, it was strictly a concept. But now we're seeing um, an updated version here, which actually is a working prototype and has electric motors. It's a fully electric car. Um, it's got this you know really unique uh, one plus two seating arrangement. The official numbers uh, for this thing here, though, it's got a of 130 kilowatt electric motors, 174 horsepower, uh, combined for a total output of 200 kilowatts, uh, 268 horsepower. Um, but the torque with electric cars, you know how crazy it always is, is 521 pound feet um, and has a 220 uh, kilowatt lithium ion battery. So they said 0 to 60 should be about five seconds or so, 115 mile per hour top speed, um, and a pretty sweet, uh, you know, car too. I still like the looks of it, it's definitely radical. Um, so you know, it's interesting. I, I don't know if Nissan wants to make electric cars more aggressive, uh, you know, with something like this or, you know, whether this is just another fun prototype just to show off. But uh, interesting to see that nonetheless, and fingers crossed they actually build it. That'd be pretty cool. A couple stories from Hyundai this past week. The first is that the, uh, some sad news here, that the Hyundai Genesis Coupe is officially being discontinued. Now, we saw this coming with the rebranding and, you know, Genesis being their own luxury brand now, separate from Hyundai. And um, so this car didn't really have much room to last, at least, you know, with the current name. But they have confirmed now that uh, the 2016 model year was the last for the Genesis Coupe, and they are not building any more whatsoever. Um, so, but they did say that there will be a replacement coming. Uh, they want to, you know, have a coupe for the Genesis brand, so a new Genesis coupe. Um, but, you know, it's going to be more of an upscale model. So you're looking at something that probably competes more with like the BMW 435i than something that competes with like the Mustang or, you know, something like that, like how the current Genesis did. So, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that turns out, but it's definitely going to be way more expensive than the current Genesis, which is going to alienate a lot of people. And so I don't think that Genesis is going to be the cool oddball import uh, tuner bargain um, anymore. You know, I think those days are behind it, unfortunately. And so it'll be interesting to see, though, what they come out with, you know, to replace it. And at least, you know, a fun sporty coupe is coming uh, from, from the Genesis brand here soon, hopefully. But uh, sad to see the Genesis Coupe go away because I reviewed, you know, both the V6 and the turbo four-cylinder and both were actually really great cars and a lot of fun in many ways. So sad to see that go. Other Genesis news, though, is that they officially announced the G80's cost. Um, so we know the G80 is going to be the new Genesis sedan um, that they, again, going under the Genesis brand um, with uh, this new one that they're re renaming the G80. And so it uh, looks, you know, the same as the Genesis sedan did before, honestly, um, but it's now $2,000. $1,650 more than the uh, Genesis sedan, uh, but what that includes is a, it's basically just giving you a new standard uh, features list that includes a new safety package that used to be like a $3,500 option, so you end up coming out ahead in the end, um, so uh, you know, not really a loss there, and uh, otherwise... It uh, continues on here uh, for you know, under the new Genesis brand, and uh, this will be their first car available along with the G90, which is the new Equus. And uh, so, yeah, great to see those. A couple other cars that were priced this past week. Uh, the first is the uh, Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, uh, which is starting at forty-one thousand seven hundred dollars. So that's about seven grand more than the uh, lower TRD model. Um, you know, the off-road TRD off-road model that. Uh, you know, the Tacoma has had here in this past year. And um, so, you know, it just gives you like a one inch wider track and a bunch of, you know, off-road equipment. It has a, a TRD uh, exhaust system and, uh, you know, a whole, whole bunch of stuff, uh, you know, skid plates and things like that um, to, you know, make it a definitely a more competent off-roader. Um, but, you know, I don't think that the standard Tacoma was bad. You know, I enjoyed the one that I reviewed. Um, and 7,000 bucks extra is a little bit of a steep uh, price hike there. 
But, you know, it might be worth it for some people. Other people would probably rather just go to the aftermarket and, uh, you know, do those same modifications on their own. Um, but interesting to see that. Another car that was priced this past week was the 2017 Infiniti QX30. Um, it's going to be launched in September, and... Um, it's going to be pretty aggressive here. It's going to start at $30,945 for the base model, uh, and it'll max out right under $40,000, which is actually a pretty good bargain considering it's a lot of it is based on the Mercedes GLA, um, which obviously is a good bit more expensive. And so, uh, you know, you're saving about three to $4,000, and I think that actually looks really attractive as well, i got to say, and a lot less awkward looking than a lot of these other little mini CUVs. Other news this week, Lamborghini has officially unveiled a new factory appearance kit here for the Huracan. And, um, you know, it looks uh, pretty aggressive. I think it's going to be borrowing, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff that you'll probably see on the new Superleger version. And instead of everyone going and buying aftermarket Superleger kits, I think Lamborghini is trying to beat them to the punch by just offering their own stuff here. Um, you know, it includes a bigger spoiler. You get, you know, these racing stripes and all this other stuff. Um, and, you know, again, strictly just appearance stuff uh, to make your Lamborghini look more Aggressive. If you thought that your Lamborghini just looked too plain and boring on its own, uh, then this is a much needed kit. Uh, some news from Tesla this past week. Now, um, you know, they recently introduced these, the next phase of their master plan for, you know, things that they plan on doing. Um, and so what they're, one of the things is they've been saying how they want to do a pickup truck and they also want to do some kind of, uh, you know, semi truck kind of deal as well as, you know, kind of like a transit van kind of thing as well. All kinds of stuff they want to get all these you know trucks and things and so um on twitter elon musk likes to reveal things on twitter just by responding to people's questions <laughs> and um so he's uh basically confirmed that uh the model x is going to be the basis for a new minibus that uh tesla's going to be doing so think of something like the volkswagen minibuses that they've had concepts for years and they have never really brought it back um like the original ones from the 60s and whatnot and so that could be something that this is, you know, based on, but they also are saying they're, you know, he wants to develop a truck, a pickup truck as well, and then uh, do some kind of van or something based off of that chassis as well. Um, so, but for the minibus, they could use the Model X platform, which uh, would make a lot of sense. You could even have it as very similar dimensions as the Model X and just package it a little bit differently and could work pretty well. But um, interesting to see that from Tesla. And then the last story this week is that um, the final Ford Falcon Ute was uh, just produced here in uh, Ford of Australia. Uh, as many of you know, um, Ford of Australia isn't going to be producing vehicles anymore, um, which is a really sad thing. They've been doing it for 90 years, and even these Utes have been in production for over 50 years, and so to... Uh, they're going to be ending them here, and um, so all of Ford Australia, they're going to quit their production for everything in October, but the Utes are the first to go here, and um, so Ford of Australia has said that they're going to be keeping the last one um, that was built, but, uh, you know, a cool thing that I've never experienced, you know, because we don't get them here in America, but, uh, you know, a cool idea, and uh, sad to see those go. So anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. I'll send it back to me in the car. One other thing I want to mention is a viewer was kind enough to send in some pictures of the new Rolls-Royce Phantom prototype that was spy running around. I've talked about this car before in the past, uh, but just cool to have some new pictures of it here, especially up close. And uh, so yeah, not sure when we'll be seeing the final version of that, but many thanks to him for sending these in. Alrighty, so still on break-in, but I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration here, like I always do. Keeping it under four grand. But it still pulls nice. Oh, I love it. And I know so many people, you know, were saying, oh man, now that you've gotten the GT350 bug here with, you know, reviewing one, you know, how how am I going to feel going back to the standard GT here? And uh, I still love it. It's still fun. I'm content with it. Although I said in the video that I need a GT350 and I would like to own one at some point in my life. Currently, I'm happy and content with the GT and the GT350 is kind of just a long-term kind of thing in the distance. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe, you know, as soon as a year or two uh, or it could just be something you know one of those bucket list cars we'll have to wait and see but um, yeah so anyway thank you guys very much for watching I'll see you next time take care